Hi, welcome to SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We are continuing our coverage of the uh, main card of UFC 171 right now with Nick Kalikas, professional MMA odds maker, and uh, he is our regular guest. His site is MMAOddsBreaker.com, and our calling guest today is uh, Nate Miller. He's also from MMAOddsBreaker.com, and he does a podcast called the MMA Analysis Podcast. All right, guys. Hector Lombard and Jake Shields, another great fight, welterweight, huge talent, interesting lines. Hector Lombard minus 205 currently as the favorite at five dimes. Jake Shields plus 165 as the underdog. And Shields is in a quote unquote contract fight here, right? Like if he wins this one, he'll be in a great position to uh, ask for more money. If he loses, uh, then that won't really be the case. And, uh, you know, Shields did beat Tyron Woodley and Damian Maya uh, since dropping down from middleweight. And those are positive signs, both were by a split decision, but still. He fought well and uh, earned the win. Lombard has also dropped down from middleweight, and uh, he had a, a devastating knockout of uh, Nate Marquardt at UFC 166. But still, you know, Shields is probably going to be competitive here. Should he really be an underdog at plus 165? I'm not convinced. Maybe you guys can convince me if that's what you believe. Nate Miller, what do you think? Oh, man, this is an exciting fight. I yeah. mean, we got Strikeforce versus Bellator here. The, the middleweight <laughs> champions fighting at welterweight in the UFC. This is about as exciting as it gets. And uh, I don't know, Jay Shields has looked good as of late. Not exciting. I mean, I, I was a wrestler for nine and a half years, so I'm a little biased. I mm -hmm. appreciate the ground game more than most. But uh, I think he's looked great recently against very dangerous opponents. And uh, while he is winning by split decision, he is winning. Sure. And uh, Hector Lombard moving down to 170. I mean, his last performance against Nate Marquardt was just vicious, absolutely brutal. And uh, what, what, what I what I really get from this is the fact that Hector Lombard, I mean, I, I've seen dump trucks that are harder to take down than Hector <laughs> Lombard, and Jake Shields was one for 30 in takedowns in his last two fights. He's great on the ground. He's, he calls himself American Jiu-Jitsu. I wish he'd practice some American wrestling because <laughs> uh, his takedowns don't match his submission game. Right. And while he's excellent on the ground, he's not good at getting it there. Lombard is excellent at staying on his feet. He's got a great judo background, and he just swings hammers. His his oh, his oh his, his hooks are just absolutely brutal, sure. Mike Tyson-esque. And, uh, yeah, I, I lean that way. I actually made my play at negative 150 on Lombard, if, mm. if we're just going to skip right ahead. But uh, currently negative 205, still not a bad price in my opinion. All right, yeah, I mean, I guess it's just a matchup of, uh, you know, one of the best submission grapplers against, uh, you know, an awesome striker. And uh, Nate Miller is convinced that uh, the striker will win out in this one. Nick Kalikas, is that how you see it? Probably. I do lean a little bit more towards on Lombard in this spot, mm -hmm. but it's hard, man. It's tough because Jake Shields is one of those guys that's always underrated. Yeah. And look what he's done lately. I mean, I think the UFC, honestly, in a way has put in Jake Shields in, in certain spots. Not, I mean, the UFC doesn't set up matches to, for people to lose, but I think they would prefer Woodley to get that W over Shields. And I think they would have preferred Maya to get that W over <laughs> Shields as well because Shields has been around for so long. And they, it sounded or it looked like to me that they were kind of feeding him the wolves to make contenders mm -hmm. out of the people that he was um, going up against. And he just kind of spoiled their plans each time. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, that being said, here's another spot. I mean, Lombard coming down to welterweight. A lot of people couldn't wait to see him. I mean, there was a lot of hype at middleweight with the guy hits like a truck. I mean, he hung in there with some of the top middleweights. I mean, even Okami, that was a, he got put on his back, but that was a competitive enough decision. Some judges called it obviously a split decision as well. Now, make no mistake, he did get put on his back enough times and he lost that fight. The interesting thing is here, I mean, Okami and Shields, Okami does have better wrestling than Jake Shields, but it's kind of a similar type of matchup. I mean, and Shields loves to press the action forward, get you up against the cage, and really he's going to be the bigger fighter here. Maybe not the stronger fighter or the more explosive fighter, but this is where it gets a little bit weird to me because, I mean, if Shields' chin holds up early, especially as the fight goes on, I mean, he might make this a ugly type of fight and manage to get top control at one point or just kind of control it up against the cage and slow it down a little bit. So I think Lombard's explosiveness – and his ability to defend the takedowns probably going to win the fight mm -hmm. because he man he does hit like a truck. Yeah. I mean that Tyson reference was pretty accurate. Yeah. I mean that's how amazing this guy is on the feet. You don't want to get clipped by any of his punches. Um, with that being said, I mean Shields is a tough guy. If his chin holds up, he's going to make things interesting. So laying the juice here is kind of tough. I did open it at minus 165 mm -hmm. um, because again I did lean uh, Lombard a little bit, but I wasn't quite sure which way the public was going to come in, right. and it did drop. It's, I mean, they got steady two-way action here early on, and actually it dropped a little bit now. Like you said, it climbed all the way back up to 205. So even though it's 205, the books actually have steady action on this spot. All right, Nate Miller, you know, I, you've convinced me uh, that uh, Lombard, even at minus 205, might have a little value. Uh, is there any kind of prop or, uh, or way that you think this fight might uh, turn out that you might uh, think also has some value? 
we'll have to see where that comes out at. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what in the distance we'll be at, but uh, you might lean that way. I do think Lombard is more aggressive early as opposed to later on. We did see him come out hard in that, that third Yushinokami fight, mm -hmm. which, uh, as, as Nick said, Yushinokami is much bigger than Jake Shields and, in my opinion, much better wrestler. And I just don't see any way he's going to be able to hang on the feet because I don't see him taking Lombard down. And Shields' only strike that is, that is prevalent, really, is his left body kick, which is very slow and has not very much on it. Lombard's very short and stocky for the weight class he's going to be able to stop the takedown and just generate a lot of power obviously shields hasn't been he's only been i think knocked out twice in his entire career only in the ufc versus uh jake ellenberger which that would came out of nowhere but uh, we might see a repeat i wouldn't be surprised at all all right so maybe i'll just lombard by knockout might have a little bit more value even than lombard just to win Possibly. Uh, we have seen Lombard cruise, we ha mm -hmm. and cardio has been an issue for him, especially mm -hmm. in the Alexander Shlomenko fight. We saw that, how he, when he does get tired, he does tend to absolutely fade. But, of course, that was a five-round fight. This right. is a three-round fight. I don't think cardio will be an issue. I don't think the takedown is even close to an issue. And I think he dominates the striking in every aspect. So I just don't see how Lombard loses for this fight. Now, saying that, Jake Shields has obviously surprised us quite a bit yeah. lately. I mean, everybody, like, like I was mentioned earlier, everybody thought Tyrone Woodley would beat him. Everybody thought... Uh, Damian Maya would beat him and even going back a little ways I mean Yoshihiro Akiyama a lot of people were on him so Jake Shields does surprise us he's not exactly exciting to watch but he is very effective I just don't see how his style matches up well versus the style of Hector Lombard Nate Miller you've convinced me I'm liking Lombard even at minus 205 thanks guys